But first, I am so pleased to welcome back Connie Kennedy Howard, who has the inside story on what to expect from BT's upcoming production of Naperville. Welcome, Connie. It's good to be here. It's so good to have you here. And it's nice to be back in the new studio. Right. It's very fancy. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't say this is your last season as teaching. Correct. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling about that? Oh my, that's a good question to start with. Um, it's bittersweet, you know. I've loved, I've loved teaching. Oh gosh, we need to get off of this or I'm going to tear up. So. I, I, I get emotional when I think about you being gone because you're, um, you're a big part of not just not just the College Theater Department and BTE, but the whole MAC, and you're always there to support. And, and seeing you go is tough for me, I will tell you that. And you will be missed, and you will always be welcome, and there will always be a seat for you whenever you want to come thank back. You. Thank but, you, um, thank you. But you're not going away. No. Mm -hmm. You'll be here as artistic director for BTE, and I think that's important for everybody to understand. Yes. And I think in a way that will be nice for you because you can focus on that without so many other things pulling. You right, know? right. Mm -hmm. I agree. So Naperville. Mm -hmm. Tell us about Naperville. Well, Naperville, we're finally um, going to be able to bring to life. So we had just started rehearsals in January when we had to abandon the production because of the Omicron variant So um, or virus. So uh, uh, finally, I had so many emails going, but you're going to reschedule, right? <laughs> so um, from patrons. So, um, uh, so we're finally going back into rehearsal next week, and we're super excited. We think um, our audience is going to love the show. So. Connie, is this a premiere here? No. Um, it premiered in um, New York City in 2014, I believe. But, but here, it, in our area? No. Okay. Then it was at Theater Wit in 2016. Oh, okay. So this is the second production. The second production. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And tell me why you picked that show. Um, because uh, we've had some people tell us that they like to see um, things that are different from them, that challenge them, that ask them to think in different directions, but they also like to see things that are about people that are like them. Um, and Naperville is a, a really wonderful script, but it is set in Naperville at a Caribou Coffee uh, over one day. Um, and it is, um, you know, it's about real people who are confronting um, uh, unexpected curves in their road, in their life journey, and learning how to move forward. And it's um, uh, a poetic piece, but also a, a really moving, realistic piece. So. so when you were telling me about the story, you said it's about how people go into a coffee shop and you have this connection with yes. people and people mm -hmm. help each other through a moment, mm -hmm. right? Or mm -hmm. th through one moment of an interaction, mm -hmm. it gives you that. Mm -hmm. And I often feel that I love those moments mm -hmm. and I know exactly what that moment is. You know, mm -hmm. when you, you go to your local store and you see the guy behind the counter and he asks you, how's your day going? And you're like, oh, I've got a big thing at work. And the next day you see him and how, what, how'd it go? And right. you're like, oh my gosh, he remembered, right. you remember. Know? Or the guy behind you goes, good luck with that today, you know? And and I think there, I, I wish there was a name for that. Like, what is that, right? What is that sense of community you build with the regulars at certain little places you have these incidental moments at? And this play, to me, embodies that. Yeah, I think the closest is community. I mean, we have different communities, but that's, I mean, like, I'm a coffee coffeeholic, uh -huh. and um, I have, I go to lots of coffee shops. I work at coffee shops, but, um, uh, but I have a couple that I go to often and I'll walk in the door and everybody goes, Connie, it's Connie. And <laughs> they, do you want this or do you want this? Because so those, those are my two drinks, you know, uh -huh. and um, somebody's already at the bar making it and it, um, it's warming, but it also uh, is inclusive. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Um, and this piece, um, some of the characters who are not regulars um, are sort of thrown by that, particularly because I'm talking primarily about an adult son with his older adult mother um, who's just had an accident. And so he's very protective of her. And he doesn't quite get it at first. He's a little thrown. And then... 
um, he was originally from Naperville, but he's been living out west, northwest, for a long time. And he sort of becomes back into the fold, do you know? Um, not that everybody has to move home. I'm not implying that. But I think you establish communities throughout your life. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, I mean, anytime BT goes to do an event, there are different area people who go, well, I can give you this, I can give you this, do you know? Right. So, and it's because they're supporting um, Glen Ellen's professional theater, you know, mm -hmm. so. And I think too, in the world that we've evolved into where everybody's on their phone. I agree. And there's not a lot of places mm -hmm. to connect with human mm -hmm. beings and especially after COVID. Mm -hmm. All those little places in your life, those little stops you make throughout your day or your week, your regular spots, become more and more important and more valuable. I agree. You know, because the, the, you, 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 you find this moment of a connection and it sort of gets you to the next moment. Right, you know? right, right. So in, in the play, the mom has an accident. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yes. Um, she was... Um uh, at home and she was trying to reach something and she went up on a ladder like she often does and she fell and um, and she kind of shook it off and um, she was seeing um, some different images um, uh, and she just thought it was maybe she had a slight concussion or something she didn't go to see about it for a few days and um, unfortunately there was a problem with her eyes and um, she went blind and so she's adjusting to being blind. And her um, adult son has come home to help her in that transition. And, um, and Candace is her name. Mm -hmm. And Candace is probably um, dealing with it uh, more proactively, at least at first, than her son Howard is. So, um, uh, but it's because he's, he loves her so much, you know. Um, and what about the, the characters in the store? Mm -hmm. There's um, a, a new, it's her first day as manager at this um, caribou. And uh, she just got promoted from another caribou. She's really excited. She's meeting all the regulars. She's not the, the manager and the barista that Candace knew. And it's kind of a mystery for a little while where he has gone. And that comes out in the story. Um, there's another young woman who went to high school with Howard, but they haven't kept in contact. They weren't really friends in high school. They knew each other, um, but they weren't really close friends in high school. And she's there and she's had some major transitions in her life. She works at Neighbor Settlement and she's working on a project for Neighbor Settlement. Um, and she actually is there from the time Caribou opens until the time it closes. She spent the entire day there with many cups of coffee. <laughs> um, uh, and then there's um, Candace's friend, Roy, um, uh, who comes in and she sees him all the time. He's invited her to go places with him, like his church and stuff. He has a boat in the harbor that he invites everybody out on. And, um, and those are the five characters that we get to know very well. It sounds, it, it's fun when you start hearing that. So now you want to see how this all yes. turns out, yes. right? What yes. happens? You know, um, Naperville for the MAC is the number two community that visits the MAC, which yes. is ironic. It's not Wheaton, it's not Lombard, it's not the neighboring Lyle, it's Naperville. Mm -hmm. So I think it's fun for the community of Naperville yeah. to, to get to see a play that really references their community yes. in, in so many ways. Yes, yeah, yeah. It'll be a lot of fun. Who is in the show? Um, from the ensemble, Kelly Walker is playing Candace, Robert Bailey's playing Roy, and Lisa Dawn is playing Anne. Oh, um, Lisa's, it'd be fun to see her back. Yes, yes. And then um, a former student, Ravi Kalani, is playing Howard, and um, uh, Whitney Daughtery is playing um, TC. And Robert, Robert, it will be nice to see back. Yeah. We haven't seen him for a while. Well, we haven't seen anybody for a while. No, no. It will be nice to see the ensemble <laughs> back together again. Yes. Really wonderful. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you want to share about the show? I think it is um, a really wonderful piece about second chances and moving forward, which seems particularly apropos <laughs> coming out of the last two and a half years. It does, um, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It really does. And and I think, um, and it's funny. Yes. There's a is. lot of comedy. It's not a drama. I think we should make no, that clear. No. And and what about age-wise? Who, who, who is it appropriate for? 
Well, um, it, it depends upon the family. There is nothing um, racy okay. in this play, um, but there, uh, there are. It's adult themes, you know. Right. So um, I think you have to. I mean. My kids saw Macbeth when they were four, so um, <laughs> I'm not really a good judge, but I think um, probably middle school and up. Okay, mm -hmm. middle school and up. Mm -hmm. So don't miss Buffalo Theater Ensemble's production of Naperville. It will open on April 28th and run through May 29th. So get your tickets now by visiting atthemac.org or call the box office at 630-942-4000.